Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another podcast. This is Business Secrets for Gym Owners with your Uncle Vinny. At the time of recording this, I am exactly one week into the book launch of my new book, <laughs> The Ultimate Guide to Small Group Personal Training. I was very, very shocked. I planned on a four week launch. Anytime I do these things, I shoot uh, for a goal of how many books I want to get downloaded, many people I want to download the book. Obviously, I'm giving it away for free, um, but I always still set goals around everything. And I had planned on a four week launch um, to get to the goal of the amount of people to get the book. Uh, I ended up getting 50% of the way in the first seven days. So very excited about that, which is means that people are interested in this topic of the ultimate guide uh, to small group personal training. So appreciate you. Uh, if you have not yet gotten the book, you can download a free copy at smallgrouppersonaltraining.com. Uh, you can also click the link in the show notes. Um, and to continue the launch, one of the things that I am doing is taking little snippets of the book and then turning it around and teaching you something that I think is very, very relative uh, for you to help you today. So it's not just obviously to tell you about the book and to push my propaganda onto you, uh, but to really give you some valuable insights on how you can grow your gym and make more money. Uh, so I could tell you a quick story. I, when my, my dad, I, sometimes I talk about my dad, it's a little morbid, but um, it's, it, it's all true. So, and it's somewhat instructive. Um, my dad had a stroke in 2017 and when, right after he had the stroke, he had like a bunch of like eight hours of brain surgery. He had gone into heart failure right after. And, um, he, uh, there's this argument in the hospital, like a vehement argument between the brain doctors and the heart doctors. And they're like yelling back and forth at each other. It's a very intense environment, right? They're yelling back and forth uh, at each other. And the brain guys are like, you cannot operate on this man. And the heart guys like, you have to operate on this man or he'll die. And it was, so it was super intense and really weird, but um, because it was my dad. Um, but obviously the heart people ended up winning and they had to do, because uh, the heart trumps the brain. And um, they ended up getting a guy named, I don't know if I want to use his name, but they ended up, I'm not going to use his name. They ended up getting a doctor to um, do the surgery. And when we started talking to the different people at the hospital and they knew we were doing the surgery and they knew it was really, really risky um, to do a surgery right after he had eight hours of brain surgery, um, they started to relax a little bit when they heard who was doing the surgery. And they're like, you got, I'm, I'm going to use the name Brady. <laughs> I'm not going to use his real name because, um, but we call this doctor the Tom Brady of doctors. Um, and basically the nurses and people like that were saying, oh my God, you got Brady. You got Brady. How the hell did you get Brady? Um, and it turns out we got one of the best doctors in New York to come in and, and do this, this surgery. And I'll never forget, because we were scared, because there, it was a very, very high risk of death to do a surgery at this point in his life. And um, I'll never forget the uh, meeting that we had with him. And this is like, he sat down with us, he met with us for like four minutes. And he sat down with us, and we were like, very, very scared. And he was like, all right, here's what's going to happen. And he told us exactly what we, he was going to do. And he told us in very simplistic form, and he said, we're going to make a little cut here. We're going to go in there and we're going to do this and that. And it was almost like he was just like, you know, drawing a, a picture of a smiley face. That's like how simple he made it. And the, the, th we, we were like, okay, sounds good. We were not like, Hey, I think we want to get a second opinion. We were not like, Hey, I think that, um, maybe we should try a different doctor or maybe we should do this and do it this way. Doc, what do you think about that? Is this, we didn't question it at all. We were just like, all right, you got it. We trust you go do what you think. Now, part of that reasoning was the intense situation and obviously us not having any, you know, know how and to do it. But the other part of what was 
that his reputation preceded him, what we were hearing about this man like he was Tom Brady, it made us feel a lot, uh, a lot more confident that we were in um, the right hands. And the third thing was the way that he explained what he was going to do and did it in a really, really simple um, way that we could understand. And we left that meeting, um, and for the first time, it was like a really rough time in our life. And for the first time, we felt like some hope. We were like, felt like, all right, we finally got this guy that's going to like get shit done and do it. And we, we went out, I remember us going out to dinner that night. And we were actually, we weren't celebrating, but we were like, oh my God, we're good. We got Brady. We got Brady. Let's go because then we got Brady uh, to come in and do it. Um, and and um, the, the, the surgery went perfect. It went exactly as he you know, said it was going to go. And, um, you know, that was that part of the journey was a was success. And so, you know, there's a couple of things that, you know, we do as business owners when we do consultations with people. A lot of times we think that we are the salesperson and we are selling them training. And if you consider yourself a salesperson or you make yourself look and feel like a salesperson, that is how you'll be treated, like a salesperson. Now, you are a salesperson, just like this doctor was a salesperson. His job is to convince us to come forward with this surgery. Um, But what you really want to be looked at as a trusted advisor. And so if you're listening to this, I want you to write that term down, is you're no longer a trainer, you're no longer a gym owner. When you're doing a consultation with somebody and you're sitting down and you're going to talk to them about joining your gym, And remember, your gym, if you're doing small group training, is a car payment. It's maybe not a mortgage payment, but um, maybe in some places, yeah. Um, But the reality is you are selling a very, very high value thing. And you don't want to be seen as a salesperson. You want to be seen as this trusted advisor, as this person that is there to help guide them down the path to where they want to go. And ultimately, when you go into your pitch and you go into, well, we do small group training and there's a ratio of four to six people in the group and we never have more than four to six people and you're going to have your own program and we're going to write your own program you automatically go into the mode of salesperson and away from the mode of trusted advisor. And so what I want to share with you today on this, my, my big takeaway is, is this, is when you're seen as a trusted advisor, there's one thing that you have to do. And that one thing you have to do is ask really, really good questions. And almost to the point where I remember when I used to do consultations, it was almost like this joke where I would almost push to never tell them anything about what we did. And I just made the entire hour about asking them questions and taking them through specific evaluations and making it all about them, making it all about their success and what they wanted to accomplish and what they wanted. And then eventually, (laughs) at some point, I would say something like this. I would say, well, yeah, I guess I should tell you what the heck we actually do here, right? And at that point, they they didn't even care about what they did. What they got was a trusted advisor that was interested in them, was interested in their success, and interested in them, you know, getting, in, in this person getting what they wanted. So that's what I want you to really start to consider yourself. When you're sitting down, understand you're selling something of high value. And if you come across as a salesperson, you're just gonna look like everybody else. But what you really wanna come across is this trusted advisor and this person that's going to you know, go on this journey with them to help them get what they want. And you're gonna do that through asking really good questions. Now, why are questions so important? Questions are important because everyone's favorite subject is themselves. 
right? And so the way to build trust with somebody is to be interested in them. And that's like what, you know, the whole book of how to win friends and influence people is that everything is about, hey, if you want to be interesting to somebody, be interested in them. And I remember the story of Jay Abraham saying something along the lines of he, he spent seven hours talking to someone at a bar once. He didn't say one word other than, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, and asked questions. Um, and they got done with the seven-hour meeting. And they said to him, man, you are the most interesting person in the world that I've ever met. And he hadn't even said anything except asking them questions. Right. And that, that's really how this has got to go. And it's going to go really, really well when they leave with that understanding and that feeling that, all right, this person understands me, this person gets me, this person was interested in me and interested in what I want. It wasn't this pitch fest of, oh, we do this and we do that and we do this and we do that. Um, and I think that sometimes we need to slow it down a little bit. That is why I like small group training, because you can slow it down. You can slow it down because you're getting a lot more money per person. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're charging four to $500 a month, don't rush that. Right? They're paying you $500 a month, and they stay an average of 10 months, which you probably can do more. That's a $5,000 meeting. Why are we rushing a $5,000 meeting. You're sitting down with somebody to build a relationship for the long haul. And I think a lot of people don't think like that. A lot of people think they got to get him, I got to make the sale, got to make the sale. And no, that first meeting, that consultation is an opportunity to sell a $5,000 thing. And maybe you sell it month to month, whatever. But if you know your numbers and you know on average that people stay 10 months, you can very predictably say that if you sell someone at $500 a month, that that's a $5,000 sale. They stay 10 months on average. And that's the approach you want to go into it with. And so I used to sometimes take longer than an hour. And I think sometimes people are squeezing them in. They're squeezing them in and I got a two trading sessions here and let me just throw a consult in there. And they're not realizing the value of that meeting. That if that meeting goes really, really well, and you're looked at as this trusted advisor that the likelihood that that person not, not only signs up, but that person starts on a good track, um, then you're, on the, you're, 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 you're getting a great start from that. But Kennedy talks about um, when you kind of bully someone into a sale, how, yes, that, that is a way to close the deal and close the sale, but... What he says is typically lifetime value is much shorter than um, than if they uh, lifetime value is much shorter uh, if they were bullied into the sale versus if they were advised uh, into the sale. And that's how you want to be. That's who you want to be. You want to be looked at as this trusted advisor and this person that's invested in their success. And we do that through asking questions. Okay, now. My favorite question, my favorite question, didn't invent this question, but um, it's really, really good and I think it's worth it and you should write this down. So I learned it from Dan Sullivan, it's called the R-Factor question. And the question is, if we were having this conversation one year from today and you were looking back on that year, what has to have happened with your health and fitness for you to feel happy with your progress? And it's the most powerful question that you could ever ask. And what you may need to do is rewind this a little bit, rewind the tape, <laughs> rewind the tape uh, and go back and listen to it and write it down word for word for word for word for word. And typically what happens is when you ask that question, people will start to talk and they will start to talk about what they want. And I have a couple different follow-up questions that I ask after that, but that's the main one that you're going to get value from in that consultation. And when you ask that question, that question alone is going to put you into that category of trusted advisor. 
And you know what they're going to response is going to be what the response is most of the time. They're going to pause and they're going to say, that's a really good question. And right there, you have elevated your status as a trusted advisor because you not only ask them a question, you ask them a really, really good question. And maybe a question that they're not used to getting or maybe a question that, you know, they've been asked before, but only asked by, you know, a high level person in their life or whatever. My, my, my guess is that they've never been asked that question. No way. But yeah, this and this is coming straight from the sales chapter of the book. I'm blanking on the uh, on the actual page right now. Sometimes I leave you guys the page number, but it's chapter um, chapter four, the ultimate small group sales process. So I go through this, and you can get this on uh, in the book, and you can also get the follow up questions uh, from there too. But that that question from Dan Sullivan. Um, that I mentioned before, go back and rewind the tape and get it, or you can get the book and get the, get the question. Um, it's, it's a game changer. It's, 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 you'll never ask another sales question again. Obviously there's more questions that you ask, but that's, that's going to be the one that's going to make the, and that's going to put you in that category of trusted advisor, um, not salesperson. And that's how you just got to approach it. You got to approach it as you're selling these very, very large, Things you're selling, uh, you know, for some of you that have higher lifetime values, you're selling a car. It's a car payment. You know, I used to get like teased by my members all the time. It's like Gabriel Fitness is like a car payment. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, that was the biggest complaint we got for many, many years. And I was like, I'll take that one. I'll live with that one. Um, but that's the advice today. Treat these appointments, treat these consultations as very, very important conversations, as high value conversations. And what you want to do is come across as that person that's going to guide them to where they want to go. Um, not someone that's going to, you know, be the snake oil salesman. And again, I'm totally for sales skills and using sales tactics and things like that and overcoming objections. I'm not like against any of that stuff. It's great. But a lot of it is how you position yourself. And you want to think about that and position yourself as that trusted advisor. And um, what you will do is you will start increasing um, the conversion rate on the people that you sell. And you'll start increasing the lifetime value of the people that you sell to. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, Go ahead and read the sales chapter of the book where it gives this question. It gives a couple follow-up questions to it. Um, there's the, sh- the sales part uh, chapter is pretty short, but I think it's, um, it's very helpful in terms of if you're trying to think about how to sell small group training. So it's uh, very well. So go to smallgrouppersonaltraining.com and um, get the book and read it. Read the book um, and go from there. All right. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye.